So, where were you? I was asking you about your day today. <laughs> Long day. No, it's a good day. Um, I'm currently printing Lost Elements. I think they're actually almost ready um, for today uh, with printing. Just having a look. And during the entire day and afternoon, a lot of students came, for example, from a uh, university, Central de Lille. Um, I don't know whether you can see something, but it's like printing the last layers. Yeah, awesome. Very high up. And actually, we are more than halfway through. And that means that in the upcoming two or three days, it's about finishing the last wall elements and then it's done. Uh, so, how long ago did this print start? We started on Monday, um, so it's like two or three wall elements a day. Uh, the nice thing is that on the top, uh, all the wood are having the same height. So there is a variable layer height, uh, which we managed to do within software, uh, playing with that. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite a small building of around 35 square meters. It's being used as a guardhouse eventually at a bigger construction uh, project from Week. Uh, see, maybe a bit more here. Uh, yes. oh, that's a nice one. And so how many different modules are there in the house? How many what? How many different elements are there? How many printed elements? Every, every wall element uh, is different and it's consisting out of uh, 11 wall elements. Wow, and every single and one, is different. one is that all the wall elements, they've got an inner and an outer layer. So you print uh, the, both of them together. Um, so eventually next week they will fill it up with insulation. There are two openings in it, two doors, um, which one of the doors are already actually in it or the openings is in it. So during printing, it's about placing those uh, scaffoldings so that you print uh, here in one go and then eventually printing on top of the scaffolding. And then such a wall element is being printed depending on the size within one and a half hours or two hours. Okay. And then during printing, two operators, they're placing different kind of anchors because of the outer leaf, they, it should not be connected with the inner leaf. So there is this kind of habilitation in order to uh, prevent a cold bridge. For the insulation. Yeah. Uh, and there's no steel used? It's like, here you see, it's like PS, it's insulation material, which during printing is being placed, and therefore there is no coverage. And then those outer and inner leaves are being connected with multiple anchors, uh, depending on the size and the forces, which the structure engineer has been calculating, um, uh, more or less anchors will be used, are being used. So is there steel in the in the wall elements? Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, uh, these are actually uh, these kind of anchors, which regularly are being used also when you're ma making a, a limestone brick wall with uh, outer brick bricks. Uh, which actually is common, pretty common in the Netherlands. So, so only what is the uh, positive thing is is that uh, normally you make the structural wall and then you put insulation and then you uh, lay the bricks for the outer wall. Uh, so that's pretty time consuming. What we do is doing everything at one go. Uh, so within those two hours uh, of printing, uh, all those facilities are being placed. Great. And what's the plan for the roof? Uh, the roof is in this case just a wooden structure because it's qu quite a small building, uh, like I mentioned, 40, 35 square meters, um, and so with just wooden beams, and then um, also, of course, with insulation, um, it's being covered. So right now you're in kind of a pop-up um, facility, right? What do you mean? Like the, the, the tent around you is a temporary unit, temporary... Uh, well, it, Currently, it's, uh, the weather is quite unpredictable. So uh, this morning, for example, it was rain. Yeah, and when it is raining uh, during printing, uh, you can imagine that then uh, the rain is smashing on the layer itself, uh, will uh, have a negative impact on the print itself. Um, uh, so we asked week to put a tent for this week uh, to cover in the print. Um, and also, of course, the printer overnight is standing just here. Uh, so also for the safety. How long does that structure take to pop up? Um, this entire building, last week they built up the floor. This week it is printing all the wall elements and then next week they can finish up, up the building. It will take probably two to three weeks. I meant the tent structure around you. 
Oh, the tent. Um, they did that in the second week of October, just within two days. And also because uh, we are located uh, close, pretty close to the construction site. So during those two days when they were uh, preparing some site facilities, uh, two of my team members, they moved um, and they traveled to France to check whether all those facilities have been prepared accordingly. So that we know when we the printer arrives, the material arrives, the rest of the team arrives, then everything is prepared properly, and we can directly you know, start printing instead of um, uh, making adjustments in those preparations. Uh huh. Have you been printing through the night by chance, or do you guys take a break? Uh, no, we take a break. So this is the last one for today. Um, so <laughs> later today in France, the restaurants are still open. In the Netherlands, everything is closed. So uh, probably we'll, we'll go to a restaurant and then tomorrow there's a new day. Uh, printing two wall elements uh, tomorrow uh, on Friday, maybe on Saturday, and then it's, it's done. So the French restaurants are open um, like for COVID restrictions, you're saying, and the Netherlands restaurants are still closed? Actually, uh, since last week, uh, since the 15th of October, uh, the government announced new uh, measurements, uh, which is like a small lockdown. Uh, all the res restaurants, etc., they're closed for at least four weeks. Actually, this is similar in France. Only in France, they've got a similar lockdown in the eight bigger cities. And we've been lucky that uh, we are not in one of those eight cities. That's also why we are all wearing those face masks. Cool. So you're on the last element, and then how long does the concrete need to cure before they can start with the roof? Um, with our material, the cyber mortar, um, uh, uh, currently they finished uh, the, the wall element. They need to cure it for like 20 minutes to one hour. Um, what they do during curing is measure the, the temperature, and it shouldn't exceed 50 degrees, um, and then it drops. 30 degrees and then it can stop curing um, the hydration of our material takes like 24 hours which means after those 24 hours they can actually already start finishing up um, uh, although we are still printing so when we have finished the last wall element let's say this friday afternoon or saturday morning maybe uh, then on monday next week they can start finishing uh, the building with um, building up the roof, uh, the windows, um, uh, preparing uh, the joints in between the wall elements with a foam, uh, putting the insulation, etc. I think those activities should take a couple of weeks um, and then it can be used. It will be delivered by the end of this year. So the roof, is that going to be supported on some type of uh, like four times column within the form of the wall? Yeah. Um, uh, in order to make sure that we can e could, could easily get a construction permit, um, uh, within a every wall element there is a cavity um, from out of the floor, there is reinforcement. Um, um, currently in the cavity they can put in the rebar, which will be uh, uh, prefabricated, and then fill that uh, column with indeed um, concrete, and that will support uh, the wooden beams. So the permitting, did you emulate uh, past construction methods that you didn't have to do um, trial by testing or did you do trial by testing? Uh, no, um, actually we didn't needed to do trial by testing because um, those columns, they are um, commonly uh, standardized here in Europe. So since those columns are in it, um, we just could um, uh, make the construction calculations together with week, and that could be approved because it's all already been standardized. Euro, uh, Euro code 2096, uh, 206 one, uh, regular for concrete structures. So um, yeah, based on that, we simplify it. Of course, we know that. Yeah, the says. Of course, we know <laughs> that uh, you can uh, optimize the structure, but then indeed that will lengthen the entire construction process. Um, actually, this building was envisioned to be built in May this year. But then COVID came in in March, April, so yeah, everything went on hold. So we're happy that we were able to do it now. Yeah, that's great that the permitting was able to work out, um, fitting into tr the traditional code with the columns. That's very promising for projects like this in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it simplifies things. And we know that there are still opportunities to further uh, optimize structures. And are there windows? Yeah, um, there were two doors. Um, one of them is like uh, being placed here. The other one is on the other side of the building, which will be somewhere 
uh, there where we still need to print some walls. Um, How thick is the wall from interior to exterior? Um, the um, uh, structural part is like 35 centimeters and then you've got the outer part. In between there is uh, insulation. Um, since the entire building is like double curved, um, the variety of the width uh, in which insulation will be placed, um, yeah, it, it changes. So it's in between um, 20 centimeters to 50 centimeters. And can you tell me how many bags of concrete you, or bags of side mortar, you, sea bay mortar, you used for the house? Um, yeah, in this case, we use cyber mortar. Also, because um, and the factory where it's being made with our partner, which actually we're going to disclose in a couple of weeks, uh, who that partner will be, um, it's nearby. Um, so we can easily produce it and then transport it uh, over day. And then we store it here. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing the, the partnership announcement. Yeah, I can believe there are a lot of people want to know that who the partner is, because that has been a secret for the last seven years. <laughs> wow, it's been a long time in development. Yeah, no, it's a good pro partnership, so we're glad that they are our partner, uh, as well as other partners like ABB or uh, Gerrit Olsenaar, uh, with whom we started this. Uh, and we call them our back end partners. Of course, we recently are um, entering more and more partnership also in the front end. Like I mentioned, next week we will be flying to New Zealand to our partner uh, XTI Quirox. Um, uh, we have to be here for two weeks in uh, quarantine and then from mid-November uh, we will be training them in New Zealand as well as building um, or printing them, uh, their first projects. Um, afterwards we probably will go to Qatar, uh, printing over there with our, our partners. Um, so yeah, the uh, community is indeed growing currently. And we've been lucky, or we are lucky that we are capable of tra uh, traveling again. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. For partners, what do you look for in a partner? What do we look for in a partner? Um, the most important thing is that um, we believe that our success is uh, being uh, led by the success of our partners. Like, for example, a couple of weeks ago, we posted um, uh, uh, some toilet buildings that our partner is printing in Japan. Um, they currently are getting successful. Um, uh, they are um, acquiring more and more projects, which means the capacity of that printer, the first printer, is being filled up. Um, in a, some time, they need to look for the second printer. That means that they are successful, and eventually, as a result, we will be successful. Um, that is actually something we search for in a, in a partnership, um, to covering one area, and that they are going to print buildings. <laughs> That's pretty loud in here. <laughs> so, you said the next place you're going is where? New Zealand. New Zealand. To Hamilton. And will that project be a similarly sized uh, house? No, nope. um, we sold um, to our partner printer, uh, which last week has been arrived. So currently, um, uh, uh, with our training that is on uh, digital in the library, um, uh, they are assembling the printer. They're doing their first trials with the mixed pump system, um, dry testing, etc. Um, uh, and in the third week of November, we are out of quarantine uh, in New Zealand. So we can train them in the first couple of days of that week. And then afterwards, we will be printing uh, for some counselors, etc. Uh, um, and street furniture. I think it's always good to start with uh, first some more simple things. And then gradually uh, make the projects more complex or the wall structures, etc. Um, uh, although people, they have their printer, still they need to learn uh, what printing exactly is. It's a completely new way of construction. So they need to learn that step by step. Um, so from our library, they're capable to download uh, simple models uh, of benches, of tables. Uh, so the, in November, they, we will be there, we'll be printing uh, three of those things, uh, three of the, uh, those projects. And then um, uh, I hope that they are capable of uh, quickly acquiring projects like buildings. Yeah, it's a really cool, like local thing for the construction companies to see projects happening. Then they can see it in person and get like kind of be more interested in it. it. To me, it seems like the kind of thing where once one company does it, then the next three are going to want to get one. And then the next three are going to want to get one. And it'll be like a yeah. compounding effect. 
Yeah, and then, then it's growing. But of course, uh, we have this partner in New Zealand. Um, uh, uh, the difficulty we had in 2014, 15, 16 to convince, to gain credibility, uh, to get our first uh, collaborations and projects. Of course, um, our partners, they will be dealing with the same difficulties. They need to uh, convince the local authorities, the local construction companies, municipalities, etc. Um, uh, to be open and so that they can work on projects. That's also why we, uh, although there is COVID and uh, we need to be in quarantine, uh, we want to go to New Zealand um, uh, to support our partner uh, so that they can start printing by the end of this year and be successful next year. And so has New Zealand set other dates for quarantine, or sorry, has the Netherlands set other dates for quarantine to end and haven't come through? Or are you positive that November, the third week of November, you'll be able to go? Oh no, everything is um, uh, arranged. We've got our visas, um, airplane tickets are booked, uh, the current quarantine hotel is being booked. Um, so uh, we will be flying next week Thursday and then we will see. Yeah, New Zealand is supposed to be one of the most beautiful and hard to get into countries in the world. Um, yeah, um, but we've been luckily uh, granted a crucial visitor visa. So. Yeah, there has been some preparation in order to go there, of course. Awesome. Um, uh, currently, we are uh, scheduling the trips in December, in February, in January, and February um, with our partners. The, those printers are currently being shipped um, uh, by sea freight. So they will be arriving by the end of this year, beginning of next year in those countries. So um, based on that, we've got currently sufficient time to organize everything properly. Not only the travel uh, side, like airplane tickets, visa, uh, but more important also to make sure that the models itself, they are prepared, uh, that um, uh, our partners, they've got real projects so that it is not a demonstration or something, but um, uh, yeah, like concrete stuff. Yeah, that's good. Any just additional questions, uh, Jared? Um, I think we covered as much as I can think of right now. Um, well, because you mentioned you wanted to keep it short. <laughs> yeah. So we'll uh, we'll touch base again when you're in New Zealand and get an update cool. from there. Uh, Plain, she made uh, also some movies from me uh, walking around here. She will send it up later on. And, Great. Um, and then when we've got some additional information, we will update you. Cool. Thanks for having me. Welcome, have a good time in Canada. Say hi to the guys from uh, Twente Edit Manufacturing and we will be in touch soon. All right, see you in New Zealand. Cool, thank you. Have a good time, bye.